morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Maths. Let me just try and show my share my desktop with you. Great. OK. Um, so we're starting a new topic today, and that is fractions. We're learning to understand fractions. Um, for this lesson, you will need um, a pencil. You will need a printout of the worksheet if you have it, if you have a printer. If not, then some paper. Then you will also need one sheet of paper to complete the do now. And this is what you need to do. Taking that sheet of paper, how many different fractions can you represent by folding it? So pause the video and try and fold your piece of paper into as many different fractions as you can. When you've finished, then unpause. Right, so you should have folded your paper into different fractions. Did you record the fractions on your paper? If not, pause and do so now. If you have, let's continue. I'm going to show you how many ways I folded my piece of paper. So this is the first way. I've taken the piece of paper and I folded it into four. So there are four equal parts and we call them quarters. So four equal parts. I've got one line, one fold going down and then one going across. I've then taken my piece of paper and I've folded it diagonally. And you can see that there are now four equal parts here too. I've then folded it again. I've made three folds all the way down. How many equal parts are there? Great, you're right, there are four parts. So this is one quarter. I have folded this piece of paper. Now it's a little bit different. You can see that I have folded it in half and then diagonally again. If I were to rotate this triangle here, you would see that it's equal to this one. What about this one? I folded it and now there are four parts the same as the others. What? You're right. You're right. Although I have four parts, they aren't equal. So I can't say that this is one quarter and this is a quarter because they are not equal. So that's actually a really important thing that we need to remember when we're talking about fractions. All of our parts need to be equal. So, what are fractions and when are they used? What I'd like you to do is to pause the video and think about when you might use fractions in everyday life. When you thought of some examples, unpause. Welcome back. So, let's take a look. These are some that I thought of myself. The first one is here for the sales. Half price off. Fantastic, particularly now, great use of fractions. Uh, for time, quite often we say half past three or quarter to four or quarter past five. Another use of fractions. Mm, I know that a lot of you play sport, so we have half of a pitch or even half time. Now, how positive are you? When we talk about volume, we can say half. So this glass is half full. And we can also talk about area. Now, I wouldn't usually say half of the moon, but it does look like it's half of the moon. For money as well. Now, I wouldn't say I know that there are 100 pence in one pound and we have 50 pence here. I wouldn't say 
half of a pound, I would say 50p. But I do know that 50 pence is half of a pound. And finally, mass, mm, particularly when it comes to yummy cakes. So I would say, could I please have a quarter of that cake or perhaps an eighth of that cake? Now let's take a look at these statements. Do you agree or disagree? Let's read them first. You can pause the video to have a think and then we'll come back. Half means two parts. There are two parts. Each part must be a half. Do you agree or disagree? What about you can't have a bigger half? Pause the video. So let's see. Half means two parts. Well, that is true because there are two parts when you have a half or two halves. There are two parts and each must be a half. The only thing is, there's something that I would add to that. This, the image, is not a half. Why not? Fantastic. Yes, you're spot on. Because each half is not equal. So I would, I would agree with that, but I would add each half must be equal. Let's take a look at this comment. You can't have a bigger half. Hmm, that's true, because if one was bigger, then they wouldn't be equal. What about this one? One part is shaded and two parts are not. So this is one and two halves. Do you agree or disagree? Pause the video. Hmm, let's see. How many parts are there in total? You're right, there are three parts. So actually, we're not talking about one part and two parts. There are three all together. So I would disagree with this statement. They are actually thirds. One third is shaded and two thirds are not. What about this one? The fraction shaded grey can't be the same as the fraction shaded red. They just aren't the same size. Pause, pause the video and have a think about that statement. Right, so let's see. I'm going to count the squares just to be sure. I'm going to start with the top row of grey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eight at the top, so that means that there are eight at the bottom. And in between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, so I know that there are 24 grey squares. Now I'm going to count the red squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. One, two, three, four, six times four. Six, 12, 18, 24. Hmm. So there are 24 grey squares and 24 red squares. Well, that's equal. So even though it doesn't look as though they're the same shape, there's an equal number of squares. Therefore, I disagree with this statement because they are equal. Now let's take a look at the fraction. It's really important that we understand and write the fraction correctly. And there are several parts. We have this, the line, the number that goes below it, and a number that goes above it. But what do they all mean? Do you know what this line is called? Tell me. And why do we need it? Great memory. Yes, this line is called a vinculum. Repeat after me, vinculum. Yes, and it shows that it is a fraction. Now, this number, do you know what we call it? Shout it out. Excellent, it's called a denominator. And why do we need it? Yes, it does. It tells us the total number of equal parts. Now that part might be a shape, it might be a quantity, or it might be a number. We'll come on to that shortly. Repeat after me, denominator. And what about this number? What's this number called and why do we need it? Tell me. Absolutely, it's called the numerator. Repeat after me, numerator. 
Great, and it tells us the number of parts highlighted. So let's take a look. How many parts are there to this shape? Tell me. Great, there are six parts, absolutely. Um, and how many are shaded? Yeah, that's right. So tell me what the denominator is. You're right, it is six. Why is it six? Yeah, because there are six equal parts. Now, we are talking, what about, um, sorry, the red? What would the numerator be? One, absolutely. And why would it be one? Yes, because we're talking about one of those six equal parts. So the fraction represented by this shape is one sixth. One sixth is shaded red. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. What fraction of the shapes is yellow? Hmm, so what's the denominator? What's the numerator? Say it again. Okay, you're right. It's two fifths. Why is the denominator five? Hmm, you're right, because the whole set is split into five equal parts. Did you notice the difference between the previous fraction and this one? The previous one was an entire whole, and this is a set. Why is two the numerator? Yeah, because there are two stars that are yellow. Well done. So two stars of this set are yellow. Two fifths are yellow. Hmm. What number is the arrow pointing to? Yeah, you're right. It is one quarter. Why is the denominator four? The denominator is four because the space between zero and one has been divided into four equal parts. So why is the numerator one? Because it's pointing to one part. One quarter is the number on the number line within the space between zero and one. Now, if the pizzas are shared equally between four people, what fraction does each person get? There are three pizzas and there are four people. What do you think? Now, we're going to cover this in another lesson if you're going to be here. But for now, I'm going to share with you that each person would get three quarters. Now that's because there are three pizzas and there are four people. We're dividing it and we're sharing it between four. So in this case, three quarters is representing three divided by four. So that would be the amount of pizzas that we have and how many people are being it, it's being split between so we know that each person would get three quarters of the pizza we know then that actually three divided by four is equal to three quarters and three quarters is three divided by four. Again, we'll look at this in the future lesson if you're here for it. Otherwise, just know that a fraction can be represented as a division. Now here comes your independent task. You might have printed this out, and if so, then you may shade the same fractions, the same representation of the fractions. If you, if you don't have a printer and you haven't printed it out, that's okay. Please draw the same ones in a group. 
Use the sentences below to help you identify the denominator and the numerator. So the sentence below says there are mm equal parts, and this is the denominator. And there are mm parts are highlighted, and this is the numerator. So let me just quickly give you an example. Here we have, I'm going to choose this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So I know that my denominator is five. What will my numerator be? Let me take a look. One, two, three. Three parts of circle. So I know that this represented as a fraction is three fifths. Now I need to find the other ones that are that represent three fifths as well. Enjoy. And when you've finished, um, please pause now and when you've finished, unpause and we'll go through it together. Welcome back. How did you get on? It's interesting the way that fractions can re be represented in so many different ways. Um, let's take a look. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the challenge. So there's also a challenge. Um, let's take a look. This shape has been divided into four equal parts. Can you explain why this is true? Can you pause the video now and explain it in words? When you've finished, unpause the video. Great, so now we're going to go through all of the answers. You can see that the ones with a pink dot represent the same fraction, which is three eighths. Check your drawings or your shading. The next one, the purple dots, they all represent three fifths. Check your drawings and your shading. And the last one, the green dots, represents five sixths. So check your answers there and your drawings. And let's take a look at the challenge. So this shape has been divided into four equal parts. Can you explain why this is true? Well, each part has an equal number of squares, 12. So there are 12 dark gray, there are 12 light gray, there are 12 red squares, there are 12 pink squares, and there are 48 squares in total. Four 12s are 48. I hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you next lesson. Bye.